well done, congratulations, and thank you. Let us lurch haphazardly into this world. I don't know what it is, but between the two of you, uh, you have a gift for taking what's in the brain when you read a book and rendering it uh, on a very epic grand scale on the big screen. Uh, can we talk about the very beginning of this? I want to know what went through your head when Peter rang or sat you down and said, I want you to direct Mortal Engines for me. Um, uh, well, disbelief. Uh, well, not disbelief, but you know, fear. Really, um, you know, <laughs> you know, fear, well, fear of a number I think of things. Disbelief is sort of better than fear. Well, you know, you know, disbelief. But but also, you know, like, oh, is you know, hold on, is 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 he really asking me to direct this film? Because I mean, I, I you know, I've I've been trying to build a, you know, career out of you know everything that I've learned to direct. Hmm. And usually you start with something a bit smaller as a fe your first feature film. And why do why why do what everybody else does? <laughs> yeah, yeah. you so boring. Um, and <laughs> and yeah, I mean, look, uh, it was it was, but you just got to jump. Yeah, I just had to say yes. I mean, I had to say yes and say. Actually, like, I, I, I should know. I should say I should say it's good that Christian's scared because I think fear is actually a good. I mean, you know, you know, every time I'm, I direct a movie, I'm I'm scared. You know, I mean, you always are. You, you know, fear is actually a really good motivator. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, and yeah. So yeah. So so mm. so. But it was like yes, okay, yep. Yeah, there's that. I you know what? Am I going to say no? I mean, if I'm going to say no, I should just I should just you know pack up and go <laughs> and I know be a chicken farmer or something. You know, go, <laughs> go do something else. You know, but I, I want to direct films and say yes. You know, knowing that it was going to be hard and it was going to challenge me beyond anything anything in, in my you know career and life up until that point and 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 yeah and it and it and it did and i mean the thing with this is that we we you know we were you know we thought that christian would be a great idea not just because you know we've worked with him for so long and know exactly what his, what his skills are but he's also intimately you know he was very very familiar with the project because we we'd been developing it since about 2006 mm -hmm. 2007 and um, you know, and Christian's been involved in previs back then, and design work. So it, w it wasn't like it wasn't a project that, um, you know, we come out of the blue with something that was a complete, a, a, a mysterious yeah, thing. Yeah, it thing wasn't like, you, oh, what the hell's this? You, right sort of knew, you sort of knew exactly what it was the second, second we mentioned yeah. it. So you know, yeah. And sharing that yeah. kind of DNA, mm -hmm. um, how much uh, easier does it make that process? I get the sense that you guys are probably at a point where you communicate almost in a shorthand. Mm. Uh, but um, having that cohesion, mm. how important was that? Uh, well, I mean, it's, I it, makes, it, was, it makes it easier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it makes it easier because we've, you know, we, you know, we've done so much together, and, and, and you know, you know, in all sorts of different ways over the years that it, you just don't really care anymore whether whether you, whether what, what you're saying to somebody, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, know, you know what I mean. You can you can actually you know you can be honest, yeah. and being honest is kind of important. Uh, you, you know, you know, and, 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 and no one takes offence or anything. It's just like and 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 and, and the other way round. Round Christian's very good, very good at being completely brutal and blunt, blunt, <laughs> blunt to me as well. So it's like you know, and that's actually important. I think that's you know, that's the only way that you can really just actually get on with it. Yeah. Otherwise, if you if you if you're dancing around people's egos and people's you know things, hmm. which you know if you if people come together as relative strangers, that's what you inevitably do for, yeah. for quite a long yeah, time. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah. It just makes things difficult. Do we have? Obviously, we have a. Um, we're sitting here in Park Road Post. I mm. visited the set down the road. It mm. was it was an amazing and extraordinary set to visit. You guys are used to working at that scale. You talk about the collaborative process and being able to be honest. Do you find? How would you describe the Kiwi way of making films like that when it comes to that kind of collaboration? When we're talking about honesty, hmm. well, I think the Kiwi. I mean, I think the Kiwi. Um, you, know, you know, the thing that we all we all sort of sort of know about Kiwis is we just we don't sort of we, we there wasn't there wasn't really anything impossible. Hmm. You know that hmm. that if somebody says, "Oh, there's no way you're going to be able to do that," we just roll up <laughs> and sleeve and say, "Oh, yeah, well, hang on, just give give, give, <laughs> give us a, a minute. Give, give us a minute or two, <laughs> and we'll figure it out." And and that's you know really that's the New Zealand psyche. It's been like that for decades. Yeah. Go for decades, and so that, and it's partly to do, I guess, you know, historically with our isolationism, down, you know, you know we're being said right down the other end of the world where mm. we couldn't get access to things that everyone else could get access to, you know, you know, in the old days, and so you just figure it out yourself. You, you know, you're alone. You're, you're, uh, you know, that you, you're, you're sort of cut off from the world. This is, you know, not not now, but back in the old days, and, and so you just thought, well, we'll solve the problems ourselves, do it mm. our way, um, and that's that. That has that. Mentality, if you like, has carried on through the decades right up till now, and, it's, and it serves the film industry and serves the, you know the the idea of making a film um, extremely well. That's a fantastic 
um, a fantastic positive sort of mm. thing to have up your sleeve when you're making a movie. Absolutely. Yeah, it's always more than, I mean, I always you always get the feeling with the Kiwi Cruise, it's more than just a job. You know, they just, mm -hmm. they rally behind you and yep. they all want to push themselves. Yep. They all want to give their best. They're not just, you know, turning up and clocking in. Yeah, there's a huge, mm. you know, just a huge positive energy mm -hmm. um, and enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And they get behind, you know, it's, 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 it's you know, it's pretty amazing. Um, you've also kind of described and segueing into the story itself that it's the heart of, of Mortal Engines. Is you've got characters that are finding their way. They've got a world uh, that is kind of changing around them. Mm. Uh, and at the heart, you've got those two wonderful characters of Hester and Tom. Mm. I just want to talk a little bit about the casting process. Um, was it as epic a mission? Is, is making the film itself to find the right two actors mm -hmm. to play them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and that was a that was. I mean, you know, that was that was wonderful to be able to, you know, um, sort of you know lean on Pete and Fran and Philippa's expertise and in, 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 in the casting process mm -hmm. to because you know the, a lot a lot a lot of our you know our main you know cast are you know were cast quite late in the game you right. know like we 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 looked for quite a, mm. quite quite a while I mean we jumped mm. straight into it. And and mm. and even like you know um, you know Hera was quite quite late in the game. We we sort of had got down to, you know, we hadn't found Hester. You know, uh, well the thing with casting is that you is that you, especially you know unless you you have a particular well known actor in mind that you want to just get in the movie for whatever reason, mm. you know, go straight there. If that's not the case, if you're starting to audition, then the really it's you you should be auditioning as extensively and widely as you possibly can. I mean, you know, do you give yourself like a hundred? Um, you know, young actors to to audition to choose Tom from, or do you, or should it be three hundred or four hundred? You know, you want to sort of make sure that in your heart that you have been so thorough that you've got the absolute best people you possibly can. And so, mm -hmm. we, you know, so the casting process is usually we we, we cast lots and lots of people all around the world. Mm. Um, and, and and you know, and and yeah, you you sometimes you don't cast, you don't make your decisions till very late. You know, sometimes it's because you literally haven't seen anybody, and the right person shows up at the very end, which, which in Hera's case is probably the, is mm -hmm. true. Or, or you, or you've seen, you know, s someone really good, but you just want to see another hundred mm -hmm. people in case <laughs> there's somebody better. You know sure, what I mean? Yeah. That, that, sure, and sure, and, sure. and there's, so there's all sorts of things. But you basically, you know, yeah, casting is is for the most part. We do a lot yeah. of a lot of casting, hundreds and, and hundreds of people we, we audition. And also, I mean, with this film, I mean, we because you you were sort of starting a new world. You know, we. I mean, it wasn't a prerequisite, but you also, you're hesitant. There's a lot of great actors out there who are already iconic and mm. already well-known. Mm. And you can't, you know, you, well, my, my tendency was to, tr to to veer away from those people oh. because they're already completely recognisable as that yep. character. Right. Yep. And that and, and, and that, that, that can throw people out of a new universe, mm. you know, when they're coming into a new universe, if there's mm. an actor that they just, you know, they recognise from a, their other favourite movie, it, it can, you know, can sometimes, you know, stop, you know, you know, stop them from you know. Well, you're always yeah. trying to make people that, you're that character as a, as a new iconic mm. film, filmic character. Yeah, it's like you're saying to the audience. You know, we know that this is not true. We know this is a film, but let's all go to it with the point of view that it's, it is. It is. You know, you're seeing something that 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 you have to believe in. That we, you know, the, the believing in what you're seeing is a real key part of of an audience's enjoyment. So, so I think to Christian's point, you want you know, it's easier for people to believe in a new world or or a film if they've not distracted by seeing all these familiar faces all over the place, you know. Mm. And from the get-go, yes. when this film rolls smack bang into you from the mm. opening frames, I, the first thing I thought was, you've got rolling cities rolling around the world devouring each other. If there's nothing more in your wheelhouse than that, I can't think of mm -hmm. what is. What mm. was it that immediately spoke, perhaps this question more for you, Peter, uh, that spoke to you when you first read um, Philip's book or you just thought, I've got to make this? Well, I read Philip's, uh, I read Mortal Engines, but then, then I carried on reading the next three books too. So, I mean, when, when I, you know, read them, I read all four of them in one run. Um, and, it, you know, it, beyond all else, it's this character story of Tom and Hester. It's really those, the four books represent Tom and Hester's life story mm. to, to a large degree. And, and, um, and the world is like, you know, the, 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 I, th I think people get a bit con confused between story, the story and, and, and the world that it's set in. And, and you know, uh, rolling cities eating each other is not the story of the film. That that's just happens. That's the world that it's in. Just like it could be set in ancient Rome, and it could be you know you know gla gladiators you know, you know fighting. It's just that just happens to be you know where your story is placed. But the story is always driven by the characters, and that's what you get. Um, that's where you get emotionally involved in the in the in the books because of the characters. It's, it always is the case, and so and so putting the um the, putting the story of Tom and Hester on the screen was what really you know was mm -hmm. the um. The thing that we that we most were most were most excited about, you know. Yeah. But we wouldn't say no to rolling cities eating each other. Either. <laughs> 
that was <laughs> well, and, and you know, I mean, when it, yeah, I mean, that's what I kind of wanted to do with the film was make it, you know, you 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 know, all that spectacle is there as a backdrop mm. for the story of these characters mm. that you're you're following. So even the, mm. the, the you know the opening of the film. It's all it's all around characters that you are then going to follow mm. through through the rest of the story, mm. um, you know, and not sort of having moments in the film where we sort of stop stop that story to just you know indulge mm. in, in in spectacle for the sake of it. No, the spectacle should always be driven by the characters. So even in that opening, which is a, you know basically a, a scene of, of a city chasing another mm. city, it, it's what it's really doing is it's, you're seeing how Hester gets herself on to London. And she's got an agenda. You don't know what you know. So, so it's like this. You know, it's even every every action sequence should be should be happening because a character is, is in some way driving the events at that point. Yeah. What I found nourishing um, too about these characters is that again, and I think audiences demand this now, don't they? They don't want a black and white. They don't want an, one evil guy and him to be mm. obviously evil for an mm. evil reason. Uh, and Hugo's so good at him and mm. get, bringing mm. that to the mm. screen, isn't mm. he, with his characters? Mm. But also with with Hester, you know, you're with her. You, you're not with her. So, you know, you, we're trying to figure out where she's coming from. Mm. Uh, when we talk about Valentine and his place, how important is it um, to both of you to have a villain? Uh, that you question his goodness and his badness. Well, I, I think the best villains do, do that. I mean, I yeah. think you know. I think with a yeah. villain, if you if you can, um, you know, you should make a villain. Uh, you mean you make the character of a villain be somebody who who utterly believes in the righteousness of what they're doing. I mean, mm, they yeah. don't wake up in the morning thinking, "Now, what evil villainous <laughs> things can I do today?" They actually have an opinion, and their opinion is ultimately geared towards the yeah. good. I mean, Valentine, everything that Valentine does is because he thinks this is the best way to go. And he's doing it for the city of London. He's doing it for the idea of survival, that they are, you know, he thinks that they won't survive unless they, they do what, you know, you know, they follow his plans and ideas. Mm. You know, so he's not doing it for his own self-interest in a, in a weird way. He's, he's, he's doing it to help other people, but he just happens to be, you know, it's the wrong, he's got the, he's, he's going up the wrong tree, really. You know? Yeah, he's just utterly <laughs> yeah, utterly like, yeah, 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 and then you have, obviously, the, the ruthlessness that, that he's just, well, you know, I, 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 I'll, I'll sacrifice whoever I need because I'm going to be, you know, say, I'm, you know basically I'm saving far, far, a far, far great, great, greater number, so you've got this guy who's prepared to be ruthless to do what ultimately he thinks is right, and mm. those types of villains, I think, are way more interesting than just the, um, the moustache twirling yeah. sort of, you know, Obvious ones. Well, just it has more dimensions, and you know, in, in, in any character, whether it's a villain or a hero, if they're if they're just one dimensional, they're boring, mm. become boring mm. very very quickly. Uh, filmmaking process. The best piece of advice, or the the one thing that you've really learnt the most from working with Peter over the years. How's that for a nice question to <laughs> chuck at you on a well, Monday I'm, morning? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be interested. In this. <laughs> I'm going to be very interested in this answer. <laughs> no, <laughs> no pressure. Oh God. Uh, um, what what have I what what have I learnt from Peter? I've, I've, well, the, the very best thing you've learnt from yeah, Peter. Very, very, very best thing. Um, well, no, no, nothing, nothing's impossible. <laughs> um, you know, um, and anything, you know, anything that's impossible is only impossible till 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 you push the boundaries enough to do it. Um, mm. But also, I mean, you know, to 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 trust your gut and just just try and keep innovating you know like i mean i, I don't mean that in in, in like a technical co context but even like just trying to create a shot like how do you keep making it as good you know the most the best way to tell the story and 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 the, get the best performance out of an, an actor just keep just keep 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 put keep pushing it just you know i mean it's it's i mean there's there's so many things that i've learned from mm. watching you work but you know, I can never second guess what he's going to do either. <laughs> it's you know, a good thing. you know, so it's you know, as 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 part of it. But I mean, tr trust your gut. You know, you you need you know, ultimately you need to make a film that 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 is something you'd want to sit down and enjoy, because yep. um, otherwise you've got nothing that you can defend. If, if you're making it for, you know, if you're trying to make it for a, 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 an audience or other people, I mean, who are those people? Why why are you why are you making it if you can't sit down mm -hmm. and enjoy it yourself and 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 and, and defend it? That's true enough. Now, is it true that you wrote a letter to Peter <laughs> asking yeah, yeah, him kind yeah. of for a job about 25, 30 years ago? Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah when I was 18. Well, I, I, I sort of wrote him a letter and, and, a, and sent down pretty much every drawing I'd ever And, ever, and you know what, that, that, was, that was actually, this is, this, is the tr this is the honest truth, that was the first bit of fan mail I, I ever got in my life. Really? really? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Look at you two now. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. cute. Yeah. First film with bad taste. You're, is number, that you're right? number one, Chris. No, no, you're, you're, yeah, uh, you're number didn't one. know that. No, you, you wrote it well. well oh, well, no, well before we branded. Yeah, oh, I worked yeah. on Brandy. You no, were, was, I think you'd seen bad taste, haven't you? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think even the yeah. Feebles had come out yeah. probably by, by then. I don't, I don't think so. But we, um, you know, yeah. yeah. 
And I mean, like, I mean, for me, it's something, I you know, that was basically like drawn, like, you know, mm. but when, you know, when I, when I grew up as a kid, I'd, you know, go and see movies like, you know, Star Wars and some of the Ray Harryhausen movies. And mm. I was living in, um, we're living in Western outside of Omaru. We had one TV channel. <laughs> and so, and there wasn't the media saturation that you get nowadays. There was no way to relive those images, um, you know, um, for me, um, uh, you know, after seeing the movie, so I had to, you know, I had to draw them. You know, I had to sit down with a pencil and paper and try and redraw the spaceships and the monsters and, and so you know that I mean that's why I ended up storyboarding for him because I just well sort of, I, I mean that's what because you see when I go get, then we're doing Brain Dead a couple of years later because you were at school still and you mm. know and you were in the fifth mm. form or something and I mm. and and doing Brain Dead a couple of years later and I and I you know in Brain Dead I, I you know it was the first time I really wanted to do storyboards you know you know I wanted to actually do it probably and do, and I can't do I can't draw. So again, you're in New Zealand. There's no professional storyboarding people around. It's like, who do I get to actually sit with and draw? And I, and I remember the, <laughs> I remember the drawings that had come through the mail of, of these dragons and monsters and various other things. So we, so we contacted Christian. Who, had you actually left school or did you? Yeah, yeah, no, no, you, no, you, no, you had, you I had, had left just school. left school. You had just left school. So the time yeah. was perfect. Yeah, right. Yeah. I had no idea what I was going to mm. do. Though. So that was my right. first job out of high school. It's a pretty good job. Mm. Right. That's a very good cool story. <laughs> I'll have to find those drawings. I mean, I will have them somewhere in a box, sort of yeah. filed away in storage somewhere. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have right. to, try to, to try to dig into hey, it. Thank right. you. Right. 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 Thanks, Kate. Right. Thank right. you right. very yep. much. Yes. Thank Jennifer. you.